This is Adventist News Update, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Andrea Musgrove. Coming up in the news, 100 years of Christian education in the Bahamas. Conference officials attend ASI convention. We are one nation under God, and Adventist Hospital brings assistance to children of Sierra Leone. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News Update. It's back to school for thousands of students all over the Bahamas. We visited Bahamas Academy Seventh-day Adventist School this week to observe the buzz around the campus. The primary and secondary students alike showed that the summer weeks were refreshing, but they are excited to be back and they are ready for a new and productive school year. The day began as usual with worship. Bahamas Academy is celebrating 100 years of Christian education this year, and the school's principals spoke of the significance of this milestone. 100 years of academic excellence, 100 years of preparing young men and women to be leaders in our society and in our churches. As we look around, we are truly grateful for what the Lord has done. We can see the fruits of our labor in every sphere of society. And we truly say to God be the glory for affording us this opportunity to train our young people. A grand celebration will be held on Sabbath, September 15th at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if you attended Bahamas Academy like I did, or you want to come and show your support and give thanks to God for the wonderful things he has done for BA, make plans to join us at 5 p.m. on the 15th of September at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church on Tonic Williams Darling Highway. And in other news from Bahamas Academy, one week before the majority of students returned to school, the administration of the school conducted leadership training for the 11th and 12th graders. This program will be ongoing as each month the school will invite accomplished leaders in our community to come and share their knowledge with the students. The leadership seminar was very good. It taught me to be a more proactive student. It taught me to think win-win and to just to be a better student taught me good leadership skills and it taught me that I could do whatever I want to do and I could be a successful student once I put Christ first. It really taught us how to set goals for ourselves and not only to set them, to pursue them. It taught us how to examine ourselves after we have started pursuing our goals and how to go back at the goals once in a while to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. The juniors and seniors of Bahamas Academy took part in the first ever leadership seminar for students on August 29th. They were led through a series of training in how to become an effective teen, the importance of setting goals, and dressing and speaking to impress. The senior master of Bahamas Academy's secondary division, Winston Simonet, was the coordinator for the event and told of why he thought to engage the students in such an activity. In the past, we have put our children in position of leadership, whether they're USM leaders, prefects, you know, so on and so on. And we found out that over time, that some of them are not necessarily equipped for the position of leadership. Or they have the ability, but they're too timid. So there, there are a number of reasons why they are not bringing out their skills. And so what we've decided this year is that we will do an ongoing training with them. So we started this summer. And we've been talking about this for at least a year, okay? But this year we set the first one in motion. So we're gonna extend it down beyond the grade 11 and 12 to incorporate a number of children who have the leadership skills and ability. And then we will build on that so that we know that once we graduate, we will continue to graduate trained leaders. I'm Laverne Stirrup reporting for Adventist Television.
The Adventist Layman Services and Industries, ASI, has become a major component in the overall thrust of Seventh-day Adventist Church today. The 12th annual ASI convention was held recently in Antigua, Guatemala, conducted by the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventist IAD. Hundreds of delegates from the 21 unions within IAD, including the Atlantic Caribbean Union, participated under the theme Sharing Christ in the Marketplace. ASI was born in the North American Division and now has has many chapters around the world. The delegates gathered to be inspired by reports from members of the blessings of God on their business ventures. The four-day event included uh, networking, business seminars, project management, and more. Guest speakers for the convention included Pastor Robert S. Falkenberg, former president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and Dr. Bertram Melbourne, professor of biblical language and literature at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Pastor Paul Scavala, president of South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists led the delegation from the region that attended the annual meeting. The convention will be held in Mexico City next August. One Nation Under God was the theme for Nations Day at Bethany Seventh-day Adventist Church. Representatives from a number of countries came together this past Sabbath at the church in the Westridge community. Laverne Stirrup has more. Haiti, Jamaica, Austria, these were some of the countries represented at the service held at the Bethany Seventh-day Adventist Church on Saturday, September 1st. It was a time of praise and worship to the only true God, the creator of the world. Songs were lifted up to heaven by the popular Haitian group, the Gospel Train, and Bethany's Jamaican Chorale. One of the highlights of the service was an interview conducted by Elder Raymond Antonio with Austria's Honorary Council in the Bahamas, Ernest Roma. Mr. Roma gave a personal testimony of how he came to the Bahamas some 50 years ago, and having lost his first wife to the habit of smoking, he enrolled in a Seventh-day Adventist program called Five Days to Stop Smoking. He credits the program and its coordinator, Dr. Robert E. Williams, for saving his life. The government official of Austria encouraged the church to continue such initiatives that would heal and restore persons in our society. Throughout the day, even though the words spoken may have been in different languages, the theme was the same. Out of many, we are one people, children of God. I'm Laverne Stirrup, reporting for Adventist Television. The Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church, along with a number of churches around the globe, held their respective education services this past Sabbath. The Education Department of Hillview, in their charge to lead with respect to Christian education, organized a day where parents and students and administrators were encouraged and blessed through the spoken word, testimonies, dramatization, and songs of praise. A mini-concert was held in the afternoon, where the church's youth and children's choirs performed a number of songs to the delight of the audience. It was a fitting beginning to a new school year. In a special newsletter dated August 27, 2012, Pastor Israel Leto, president of the Inter-American Division, revealed that 2013 has been designated the Year of the Laity. According to Dr. Leto, a number of initiatives involving the division's laity will be announced during the IAD's committee meetings to be held in Honduras on October 27, 2012. Pastor Al Powell, Personal Ministries Director for the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission, shared his excitement that the church is placing emphasis for the entire year on such an important and committed group of persons within the church. For more information on the Year of the Laity, visit the ACUMS website at www.acunion.org. And coming up in the South Bahamas Conference this weekend, we are pleased to have with us the speaker for the Countdown to the End Evangelistic Campaign, Pastor Cheyenne O'Connor. The entire membership is invited to join in a big rally at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church from 5 p.m. on Sabbath, September 8th. The next campaign will, meeting will be on Wednesday, September 19th at 7.15 p.m. also at the Hillview Church. So join in as we plan for this mighty outpouring of the whole Holy Spirit on the city of Nassau. 
The Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists, in conjunction with the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission, will host Sabbath School Congress in the South Bahamas Conference. All Sabbath School superintendents are invited to an important briefing on Sabbath, September 8th at 4 p.m. at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church. Your church cannot be left out, so make sure you make the effort to attend. On Monday, September 10th, 2012, Dr. Jamie Castoron, president of the Inter-American Adventist Theological Seminary, IATS, will address field leaders and pastors of the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission on the plans, programs, and policies of IATS. The meeting will begin at 10 a.m. at the Union's headquarters on Gladstone Road. Pastors and field leaders from the fields outside of New Providence will join the session via WebEx. Pastor Leonard Johnson, president of ACOM, noted that Dr. Castron was invited to the Union to share with the ministers the opportunities available for further studies throughout IATS. Presently, it has 10 sites located in Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, and Venezuela. Pastor Israel Leto, president of the Inter-American Division, explained that the vision for IATS was to have our ministers study in our territory, in our environment in Inter-America, addressing the local needs, learning to work in their environment, so that their education and workplace became one. IATS was started in 1996. It received full accreditation of its doctoral and master's degree programs from the Association of Theological Schools in August 2011. And now here's your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television and the Health Ministries Department. Wonderful, peaceful rest. Nature's recuperative agent. We cannot live without it. God knew it, so he gave us rest from the very beginning of time, the Sabbath. If the benefits of rest was put in a pill, it would be the hottest selling supplement on the market. Rest restores the body's mental and physical energy reserves. Rest comes in three forms, daily sleep, weekly and yearly rest and recreation. Research shows that people who get seven to eight hours of sleep live longer than those who don't. Our daily rest relates to our daily clock, our circadian rhythm. Research is now showing that the body also has a weekly clock. It's called the circaceptin rhythm. There is something within that makes a period of rest necessary every seven days, undoubtedly set by the Creator. The body also needs a time for annual rest and recreation, so take your vacation this year and live your life to the fullest because God wants you to be healthy and happy. This is Ida May Hanna with your health tip from the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And in the North Bahamas Conference, the North bid farewell to Pastor Ricardo Bain, his wife Tamika, and their children Zoe and Ricardo Jr. On September 1, 2012, Pastor Bain was installed as the pastor of Queen's Faith Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Greater New York Conference. Pastor Bain is one of the longest serving youth directors of a field within the former West Indies Union and now the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission. He served as the youth director of the North Bahamas Conference from 2003 until recently. In addition to youth director Director in the North. He also served as personal ministries director. The administrators and departmental directors of ACOM joined the North Bahamas in expressing gratitude to Pastor Bain and his family and offer continued prayer, support, and God's blessings in their ministry. The Inter-American Division Sun Plus Connectivity and Technology Workshop, hosted by the Dominican Republic Union, began on September 2nd and will conclude on the 10th in Santo Domingo. Representatives from all 21 unions are in attendance. These meetings will assist the church in operating within the cloud technology, with video conferencing and setting proper securities to minimize hackers from breaking into the church's networks. The software will allow workers to operate effectively and efficiently within the organization. 
Additionally, the participants will be able to operate cloud computing with the Treasury software SunPlus recently implemented, implemented throughout Okom. Attending the conclave were Tanya Palmer, Treasurer for the North Bahamas Conference, and Neil McKinney, Auditor and Information Technology Manager for the South Bahamas Conference. Next weekend, during September 14th through the 16th, the long-anticipated Women's Conference 2012 will be held and women from all over Okom will meet under the theme that I may live for him. The guest speaker for the event is Dr. Gina Brown. There will be a joint Sabbath service for the entire North Bahamas Conference at the Grand Aulukai Hotel and you are invited to go by on Sabbath morning. Additionally, a special production will take place in the evening and this event is open to all for a small cost. For more information, contact your local women's ministry leader. This year, the North is eagerly awaiting Akum's Bible Boom Challenge, formerly the Bible Bowl, because they will host the event in Grand Bahama during November 1st to the 3rd. The Youth Department of the North Bahamas Conference, along with the administration, recently showed appreciation to Akum's Bible Bowl champion, Waylon Johnson, who was successful in bringing the Inter-American Division's Bible Bowl trophy to the Bahamas. His home church, 8 Mile Rock, and the entire conference are all proud of him for a job well done. Let's go to the Adventist World News this week with the Record in Focus Christian magazine. The West African nation of Sierra Leone is battling against health statistics that see nearly 20% of children die before the age of five. According to Mission Network News, Christian development agencies such as Living Water International are doing their part in fighting off a cholera epidemic by providing communities with clean water and sanitation. But Australians too are lending their support. Sierra Leone-born nurse Adjuratu Thomas has mobilised her colleagues at the Sydney Adventist Hospital in providing funding for a small pioneering children's hospital in Bow. Sierra Leone's second largest city. The hospital has been inundated with overnight patients. So the hospital is seeing, uh, their patient is seeing about over 100 patients a day at the moment, particularly at the rainy season, where obviously children are very susceptible to um, the general um, illnesses that are floating around. Well, everyone is back to school by now. It's a time of excitement for the kids and stress for the parents as we anticipate those school pickups. But we want to encourage our students to stay focused and pray for wisdom. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. We want to thank you for joining us each week on News Update. And if you want to send us a little piece of hot news, feel free to email our producer at atvbahamas at gmail.com. On behalf of the production team here at the South Bahamas headquarters, I'm Andrea Musgrove for Adventist Television. <laughs>